Hey everyone, a very warm greetings from Eduraker. I am Sonal Mittal and I work as a solution architect with a multinational company. So on that note, let me begin with today's session. Let us look at the agenda for today's session. Agenda is to understand the basics of Kubernetes. First, what is Kubernetes? In Kubernetes, we have multiple objects, high level objects. The smallest object that Kubernetes cluster you can work on is a pod fridge. What is a pod? Okay, so we will understand what a pod and why a pod. We will also understand replica set and replication controller. We will understand deployment controller, which is the main thing that we want to look on today. And we will jump on to the practical. Okay, all right. So I hope the agenda for today's session is clear. Let us continue here. What is the need of Kubernetes French? Okay, even before that, if I say containers, the very first thing that comes in your mind, containers. If I say containers, what is it that comes? Which tool comes into our mind? Right, Docker. Right, everyone will think Docker, Mesios, Kubernetes. Right, whenever we talk about containers, it's all about Docker, Docker, and Kubernetes fridge. Right, okay. Fridge containers, tools like Docker, Okay, they provide us containers friends using this container tools. We can create containers. We can delete containers. Now friends, when, whenever we say we talk about containers, the only thing or an only tool that we all talk about is Docker. But as you all know, I'm sure everybody is aware of it. There are other organizations that also provide us containers like container D cryo, right? We, uh, we have tools like rocket, right? We have Linux containers. In addition to Docker being one of the major leader in the market that provides us containers. Okay, so next to print. So these tools, all of these tools like container D, cryo, I'm talking about rocket, I'm talking about lakes, I'm talking about uh, AWS provides containers, then we have Docker which provides containers, right? So these tools, they provide us containers prints. How do we get containers? How do we get containers? If you see here, as you all will tell you, containers are nothing but processes which are fast, reliable, efficient, lightweight. That's right, French. Okay. But how do we get a container? How do we create a container? So any container tool you take, French, the very first step is to create a file. We call it as a manifest file. In Docker, we call it as a Docker file. In this file, French, we write simple instructions as to what we want in our container. As to what we want in our container. Let us say in my container, I want to bundle. I want, we all know container is a process, right? Which when runs, provides you your application, right? Okay, it is a separate environment. It has its own network. It's a process when it is running, it provides you your application. Now on my container, I need to bundle. I need to Tomcat over it. Okay, and then I have also placed my application code. Okay, so these instructions I'm going to provide it in a file. Then we build this file in some of the tools we call it as a Docker file. In some of the tools we call it as manifest file. Okay, in Docker we call it as a Docker. We provide these instructions as to what we need in a container. Once the file is ready, a developer or a Docker administrator or the container tool administrator will create an image of it. Will create an image out of it. I hope you all agree with me. Okay. An image will be created. Now what is an image? Image is a static file. It's a set of binaries and libraries that are needed for your software to run. Where is my software? When will my software run? When I run this image, a container gets created. When we run the image, that's when the container gets created. Right? So we don't create a container. Basically in organizations, friends, we create images. How do we create an image with a Docker file? This is a three-step process. Any container tool you take it, everywhere you'll first create the file. Out of this file, you will build it into an image. And out of an image, a container will be created. That is why we always say build, ship, 
run. Build your file into an image, ship it to any location, any library, and run it. Okay, ship it to any environment, your QA environment, your prod environment, pre-prod environment, and then run it to create a container. As you run the image, a container, that is your application, will be available for you to access. Right? Okay, so French tools like Docker, being the master leader, market leader, tools like Cryo, Container D, will provide us these images and containers. They provide us mechanisms to write the Docker file, build them into images. And when we run these images, they provide us platforms to run the images to create containers. That is the task of container tools, French. Shall we call them as container runtime interfaces? In market, we have multiple container runtime interfaces, Docker being the leader in that. These container runtime interfaces provide processes or containers that are isolated, that have their own environment, that are faster. Why are they faster? Because they don't have any underlying dependency of operating system not required. Not required, unlike virtual machines. They are reliable because they can be created very easily and fast. Efficient because resources are allocated to them on runtime. Lightweight, of course, no underlying dependencies. All the required libraries are present in the image. Build them into containers. Scalable, that means on if you have to create a virtual machine, okay, on let's say you have a 50 GB physical machine on one particular machine is. On that, you will install VM. You will partition that machine into five virtual machines because your application needs at least 10 GB for it to run. Right? You cannot scale further. Right? The amount of resources that are available on your physical machine, only those many virtual machines you can create. Agree? But that's not the case with containers. You can easily scale up those containers to hundreds of containers, friends, because the resources are allocated to the container on runtime. Run time. On runtime. Okay. Okay. So that's about an introduction to containers, friends. I hope you have understood. Let us move on. Now, friends, these tools that I just spoke about, these tools like Docker, they provide us only they provide us basically, they provide us images. They provide us, they provide us a mechanism to create images. And you can also run this image to create single container. Single container. One container at a time. Or multiple containers, different images, but one at a time. But consider this scenario, friends. I will tell you one scenario. Here it is a problem. Right? Let us also take a diagram here for better understanding. Consider this scenario, friends. You have Docker. You're using Docker as a tool to create containers. Or some you created one container, let us say, a Tomcat container, or let's say my application. You have your application, my app, version one, which you have deployed as a container. This is one container which is already running in your environment. Now, as per the configuration of this container that you have set, the CPU and memory that you have set for this container. It can manage only 200 user requests. 200 user requests it can manage at a time. My application is relatively new and at a time, 200 users are only trying to access this application and it is able to manage it. But after a few months, my application has become very popular in the market. Instead of 2000, I'm now getting 1000 users. The requests that I'm getting to my container are, to my application are 1000 users. Will this container be able to process these many user requests? No, right? It will not be able to process. It will give memory out of error it will give. Or timed out error it is going to give because this container can manage only 200 requests. Only 200 requests it can manage. Rest it cannot. What should we do in this case, friends? What will you do in your infrastructure? You will scale up the infrastructure, isn't it? Same thing with containers. You will create more containers. Right? You will create more containers. I'll create more containers. Each container can manage 200 user requests. Right? Okay. So I will create more containers. My app version 1. 
same thing I'm placing here. I'll create five more, five total five containers to cater the needs of thousand users. Now the request will be distributed to the request will be distributed to all the containers. All the five containers requests will be distributed, right? So we're able to manage the user request easily. And to create these containers, of course, you will use the container tool Docker. Single containers can be created with Docker very easily. Amazing. But now as we progress, let's say there is a sale coming up on my application. Some three day sale is coming. So of course, users, even if I don't go and check this application, but there is some sale, of course, let us go and check out what's in the sale, right? So instead of 1000 users, I'm expecting some 50,000 users now for the next three days. I'm expecting 50,000 users. Can you guess the number of containers I will have to create so as to manage 50,000 users request user traffic? Of course, I will at least need some 200 containers. I will at least need 200 containers. Right to manage these many requests or let's say five lakh user requests you are getting in real time. These are the request number of requests that you will be getting every few minutes friend. So five or 10 containers is not what you will create at the organization level at a production level. You will manage hundreds of containers friend. Some thousands of containers a team will manage friend. right to cater to to be to able to manage the user requests. Right? So how will you create these many container friends? How do we create these many thousand, two thousand containers? For these friends to scale up our containers, that to, to create scaling up is secondary. Before that, to create these many containers, okay, we base we need an orchestration tool. Friend. So to in order to in order to create multiple containers. With one single command friends or five, we have container orchestration tools friends in market. We have container orchestration tools. Container orchestration tools. Right? What a con orchestration means? Orchestration means managing, scheduling, creating, rather starting. Deleting your containers at a go, friend. That's what the task, first task, first task of an orchestration tool. First task of an orchestration tool. Managing, scheduling, starting, deleting your containers. And manage 200 user requests. Those containers to hundreds of containers, friends, because the resources are allocated to the container on runtime. Run time. As we progress, let's say there is a sale coming up on my application. Some three days sale. Containers at a go, friends. That's what the task 